his whole world has just been spun around. Not only did he find out that he is not actually from Gaia, but he is from this, um, this terror world, he also finds out that he was intended to be the angel of destruction, the one that brought about the end of the world for these people. Now, while it seems as though Kuja's is a sort of independent entity capable of his own thought, unlike the majority of the genomes, it does seem as though um, Zadan was... Zadan's creation was intentional. Uh, Kuja was created to be the, the angel of death. Or, no, he wasn't created to be the angel of death. He was created to be a sort of standard genome which would become a vessel for the soul of someone who came from Terra. And that, uh, well, I mean, he was too independently minded. He actually had a mind of his own, unlike the majority of the genomes. So Garland's like, yeah, okay, we'll just repurpose him into speeding up all the deaths and destruction and such on, on Gaia. But the problem is he was never intended for that. He wasn't intended to survive forever. And he wasn't intended to be the all-powerful beast that he, was, he needed to be. So that's why uh, Zidane was created here. But uh, being told all of a sudden that you, you're not only created, you're not only not the same as the people who spent your entire life, you created and destroyed them. Just as obviously fucked them all up. He's not showing any affection for the people that he spent all this time with. I guess he's really just trying to distance himself from them. Uh, he probably doesn't really even mean the things calling the kids stupid brats and all that. I guess looking at it this way, I'd say that Zadan and Vivi actually have quite a bit in common. They're both manufactured life forms for a specific purpose. They were both created, in a sense, to be... Um, they were both created for the purpose of being soldiers in some form. Perhaps, uh, perhaps Zadan is maybe a bit more grand concept. But they both appear to be constructed as the uh, souls, or for the souls now, of their respective worlds. Now, the genomes seem to have been built with the intention of being inhabited by the souls of the people of Terra, whereas the, the black mages were simply intended to be foot soldiers, fuck cannon fodder. A big praying mantis kind of job. An extra set of arms. <laughs> I would assume that in the event that our other characters here didn't come to rescue him, Zidane would have simply capitulated and would have eventually just become this empty, um, the sort of empty that vessel that the other genomes were, that he would have become a uh, body for just some other Terra, Terra soul. Yep, it's over.
fact, he's still in the middle of that crisis right now. There is that kind of common thing. You see it then come up fairly often in storytelling. You have this perspective that the main character is in some way going to succumb to some sort of corruption, that he will or she will go and become the thing that they were fighting against. Talking about like how you have, like say Star Wars, one of the running things through the uh, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi was that Luke would to come to the dark side and he would go and uh, become like his father was. Now, unfortunately, I never really got the impression from watching those movies that Luke could ever really do that. Because they didn't really do enough to push the idea that he was actually in danger of becoming that. Here they're putting an admirable effort into trying to push that... The Don could, in fact, become this angel of death. Or not really become the angel of death, because he's outright refused that. And Garland has, at this point, even given up on that. But he doesn't really have to become the absolute evil that he was intended to be for him to give up on him. He could simply... Simply go and uh, allow himself to become this... Oh, shit! Expect that. <laughs> oh, all right, that was supposed to happen. I guess, in a sense, it's time for her to rescue him for a change. I've kind of seen the common thing over and over again, even though she's tried to sort of pick herself up and, uh, and become more of a complete self-reliant individual. She has repeatedly over and over again required to, uh, to be rescued in some way. And now we've reached the point in the story where it's her turn to return the favor to Zidane. And I don't mean that in the sense of her showing up and helping him out with this fight, although that did clearly just happen. Somebody had to sort of grab him from the cliff's edge here. Because he wasn't, he was in danger of falling off the edge and becoming a slave to Garland or a slave to Terra and all that. And all the other people showing up didn't seem like they had the effect needed to bring him back. I suppose anybody who's really going to do it would have to be Dagger. into thinking that's what you think, but we all know that's not true.
All right, finally got a party here. Give me a sec, I'm gonna go check my loadout. The characters all seem as though they've gone through their character arcs at this point. Zidane has finally... Oh, damn it. Characters have more or less, I mean, it's obvious, like, we're reaching a point where we're almost at the end of the game, even though we're still on disc 3. The characters have, for the most part, gone through their character arcs. Zidane has sort of gone and had his sort of regression where he's gone and he has sort of fallen to the dark side a little bit, brought to the brink, and then pulled back. And it's oftentimes, in a character arc, one of the final things to go on with. You've had V.E. who has more or less come to uh, understand what he is and gone and uh, accepted his potential fate, the fact that he was an artificial person and that he may end up dying at some point in a short lifespan as a result of that. Characters like Amaran has gone and he's sort of begun to accept the help of other people, kind of a short character arc for him. Dagger, all of them, the characters have gone through their character arcs, and we're seeing them now, like they've become more complete people, as is a typical character arc, and we're getting to the point where it's more or less just a sort of physical challenges we need to overcome in order to finish this game. And the various um, challenges and conspiracies and everything going on behind the scenes have finally been laid bare. We know what Gaia is, we know what Terra is, we know Kuja's plan, we know Garland's plan, we know why the summoners were destroyed, we know where the mist comes from, and we know all that kind of stuff. It's just like, oh, okay, Kuja and Garland, those are the two people that are now just our obstructions to saving the world. So, even though we're still in Disc 3, it does feel like the game is starting to wrap up. And, let's go forward and take out Garland. But, uh, we'll be doing that in the next episode. So, thanks for watching, and come back in the next one. Hopefully, it's coming soon. <laughs>